This is the November 2022 Jack Wolf Knives release uh, called the Cyborg Jack. And you've seen this uh, in numerous videos at this point. And this one is mine. Thank you, Ben Belkin, for this uh, beautiful knife. Um, man, you designed a doozy here. It's uh, a lot of the same but different. And that's what we want out of everything. The same but different. It's in a comfortable format that we understand and love perfectly executed, but there's some different lines here. Things we're not used to seeing in ordinary or traditional slip joint knives. And I love it, I love it. And of course, I'm talking about the shape of this handle. Shape of the handle of the Cyborg Jack is very, very unique. And hence, I think that's what uh, um, inspired the name Cyborg. It has angles, it's uh, all these other uh, knives, most of the other knives that, that have come out that uh, Ben Belkin has designed have these sumptuous curves. Uh, some of them, uh, well, this one, for instance, has a coffin-shaped handle and uh, a swell shape, and uh, it's got uh, organic curves there, and you got your curves here, and but here it's all angles. And um, I think it started, I mean, I know it started as a design challenge. I want to do something different. I want to see if I can incorporate angles into a traditional format uh, like we haven't seen before, but still make it comfortable, but have it look futuristic, but in a traditional format. And uh, man, he did it. He knocked it out of the park and it is comfortable. It does feel great in hand and um, it does look different and well, mission, mission accomplished. So here, let's start from the tail end. Why not? Look at the bolster. Uh, first of all, look at the, the tail end. You've got this uh, sort of angular setup that you see on the tail end of um, a lot of tactical knives. Have a short and a long uh, on an angle. It's good for, for thumb capping. I know that's not what was going into this in terms of uh, that usage, but this is sort of, um, to me, a reference to a modern shape. Um, also, I like how he has faceted the end uh, with these chamfers. They don't go all the way around to this side or this side. I mean, you can see a very, very light, delicate chamfer there, but it is uh, comes to this sort of diamond point. Also to me, and this is the lens I see things through, a reference to the more modern and uh, dare I say, um, well, I'll just say more modern folder right there. I love that. And then it translates uh, into a, a different interface with the cover material here. Um, in this angle, pop, pop, usually, this is what we see, especially on a jack wolf knife. We see a straight bolster, but also a fluted bolster. Here we don't have the fluting, and we don't have the straightness. We have the unexpected, the and it looks it looks great. It looks very, very cool. And then it echoes in the sort of opposite direction down here, where you have a short and a long here, short and a long, short and a long, short and a long. Okay, so when I went to art school, uh, that we would have called this push-pull in design or in, um, in uh, well, in painting composition. Uh, push-pull. Now, I don't know if they still talk like that in art school, but push-pull, meaning there's a tension here. You've got You've got a short side and a long side, and then over here you have a short and a long, and it creates a diagonal line that you that isn't illustrated but can be seen and inferred, and it just creates all this movement. And then that movement lines up with this line. You know, the line between that apex and that apex is this straight line here, and you get some really cool, and then so the this apex meets that apex and it lines up with that apex. It's like Nazca lines on the, uh, or those uh, ley lines all over this thing. And uh, uh, somehow it all equals comfort. <laughs> it fits in the hand really, really well. You have, an, uh, for all intents and purposes, an arc here, but it's an angle. And two fingers fit nicely there. The rest of your hand fits nicely there. And you have some room, or at least I do, to move it around a bit. Uh, to, to catch it here, to ride up a bit. If you need uh, a little bit of power behind your cut, not too much power, because that's so thinly ground that you're going to go through whatever you're cutting. 
and then boom, your thumb's going to be right there. Uh, but just really uh, thoughtful handle design, but also audacious, you know, especially for a slip joint knife and um, and complex, uh, but very comfortable. And then you have this overall um, contouring in this direction, which is, of course, pleasing to the hand. Uh, mine has this nice uh, green canvas micarta. It's starting to take on some patina. Uh, it also comes in a pink fat carbon. Uh, I've lost track of the carbon fibers. Uh, ben chooses, uh, always chooses some beautiful carbon fibers uh, for his knives and um, some thematic colors. I know uh, the theme of this knife color-wise is pink and um, here I'll show you. And so I know that uh, I know that the, one of the carbon fibers is a pink Check this out. So here's the cyborg jack. There's the artwork that you've come to expect. This cool artwork. Um, of course, that's a, a a tip of the hat to the Terminator. And uh, here you've got a pink cleaning cloth this time, which is cool. And then this awesome sticker. Well, I'm not gonna pull it out because it's being stubborn. Oh wait, there we go. Nice night for a walk. I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. If you don't know, then you have to watch the Terminator. Come on, you have to watch the original Terminator. All right, so you get that. And, and obviously these angles and the futuristic nature of this design are what go into naming this the Cyborg Jack. Uh, like all Jack Wolf knives, the bolsters and liners are one integrated piece of titanium. Um, well, I should say two, but uh, uh, there's no seam, there's no uh, soldering the bolster to the liner like on most uh, traditional knives. It's just a slab milled out with a spot for the cover. And then you remove the covers with these uh, screws, and then underneath there are body screws and, and structural screws for the lock. Uh, so this, you can take this down if you want. I, I, I haven't yet and have no desire to. And then, of course... You have this amazing action, just incredible walk and talk. And what most uh, slip joint people look for is a flat lock on the half stop. It has no real practical uh, purpose, but it is a, uh, a real sign of fit and finish, uh, a, a real sign of good design. So, and uh, there you go, you see it there. And then it's totally flush when it's uh, open like that. It's like you can barely feel that. You can't really feel it at all. You can see it, though. Just a slight seam between lock and clip point blade. All right, let's talk about this clip point blade. Uh, I, I believe this clip point blade was designed first. And then the handle idea came second. But to me, it's evocative of the beautiful clip point blade you'll find on a Lanny's clip. Um, this is the Benny's clip, his uh, take on the on the Lanny's. Uh, and, and what that is, is that long swedge. But now that I'm looking at it, uh, looking at them together like this, this is more like a California clip or a Turkish clip to me. But just that long, long um, swedge coming uh, over top the the center and over the uh, nail neck, uh, whereas here it's it's uh, west of the nail neck. God, this is a great, great knife. Man. Uh, okay, so, um, and then very, very thin, full height hollow grind as usual. Uh, the only exception is that knife I just had out, the Benny's clip, has a uh, mid-height hollow grind. You might hear my daughter eating, coughing along up in the background. Excuse her, she will be punished afterwards. Uh, it has the very high um, sharpening notch that I love. And man, it's so thin, you could just, you could keep sharpening pretty much until the end of that notch and still have a serviceable edge and have a very, very sharp edge all the way up there, all, all along the way. I love the grind lines on this. And man, just a stupendous knife. These slip joint knives uh, by Jack Wolf Knives have totally reinvigorated uh, my love of slip joint knives, which is 
um, well documented on this channel and on the podcast. And um, it, it has really upped my what I expect from a slip joint. Now, you will never hear me criticize Great Eastern Cutlery, but they do work on uh, old machines and older patterns that um, they don't feel like this. It's a different sort of feel, and they feel great in their way. I mean, I, do not get me wrong. I love Great, great Eastern Cutlery. They're one of my all-time favorite knives and knife companies, but um, the action and the just the action and the fit of these are incredible. They are incredible. So um, very, very pleased to have this. Thank you, Ben, uh, for this cyborg, Jack. This is so awesome. Uh, it, it will always be cherished in the collection with these other incredible Jackwolf knives. All right, thanks for watching.